Yeah. Well, how do you guys want to do? We all like what, individual. We all ask together. What, what are we doing? Uh, Showtime needs to Let's finish with that first. Uh, you can do an interview too, right? So we're going to do Marcus first, you second, your third, your fourth. Who else is there? That's it. And then we do the ones with you guys, okay? Okay, cool. Oh, is anybody ready? Somebody wants to do it first or no? I have a couple questions. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's Hi, David. Hi. Um, so reports are that Canelo's looking to face Munguia instead of you after you defeat Andrade. Um, what's your thoughts on that? And then second, if Canelo continues to duck his mandatory, would you petition the WBC to strip his belt? Um, I mean, yeah, um, I feel, I mean, I do feel a little bit let down that we still haven't made that fight. Only because, uh, and it's not that I'm asking for something, is I have one opportunity to, to fight for the WBC belt. I've been um, the number one contender for the past two and a half years, is going on three now. You know, and I have the, not only did I win the, the WBC title limit, I, have, I won the WBC interim belt. So that means that you automatically get a shot at the title. But um, if he wants to go the other, other route and fight Mongolia, it doesn't really mean any, anything to me because, you know, I'm not going nowhere. As you guys can see, I feel, you know, great today. I worked extremely hard. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna look fantastic in this fight too. So, out of this, out of all the bad, I see a lot of good coming out because I'm getting more experience. This is my second pay-per-view fight. The last fight with Caleb Plant was, you know, a big fight. Um, a lot of people went, so I'm getting more experience with this. So, uh, you know, now the pay-per-view fights, I'm getting more experience. So, I just feel like whenever that fight happens, you know, we're not gonna try to rush anything. Whenever, it, whenever it's time to happen, it's gonna happen. But you know, I'm gonna be even better than I am today when that opportunity comes. Thank you, David. Yeah, thank you. Can I say it too? Hola, buenas tardes, David. Hola. Uh, bueno, pues mi pregunta es, like, uh, ¿qué significa para ti esta pelea que viene, sobre todo, pues ahora que vas a ser papá por segunda vez? Sí, tomo, pues me siento muy bien ahorita, muy motivado para la pelea, motivado que vamos a tener otro bebé, so estoy entrenando bien duro para ganar la pelea, pero me siento 100% bien ahorita y, um, pues ya estoy listo, ya es tiempo para pelear en dos semanas y me siento muy bien. Qué bueno. Uh, ¿qué, uh, ¿Para ti qué significa o oh, qué? Oh, ¿Qué estado crees que representas más Washington o de dónde eres? Pues la verdad, yo represento todas las ciudades, las ciudades que me ha quedado en Phoenix, California, um, Washington, Oregon. Pues todo, yo me siento que aquí tengo fam familia en todos los lados, o so represento to to lo todos los estados. Perfecto, gracias. Gracias. ¿Voy yo? Sí. ¿Puedo? Sí, sí. Hey, wait, um, me ponen una camisa, una toalla ahí. I'll just, my bad, I'll get it, I'll get it back. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. David, este, gracias por de verdad que la oportunidad que me estás dando. Sé que pues, nos conocemos detrás de cámara. Realmente quiero darte las gracias y me estoy hasta nervioso, bro, porque fuera de cámara siento que eres panita, ¿me entiendes? Y verte entrenando por, de la manera que te conocí es asombroso, bro. De verdad que estoy, estoy orgulloso de, del tipo de persona que eres y de tu familia. Y quería decirte eso, bien dicho. Soy, gracias. Eh, vi que en la pelea de, de Daniel García, Dani García, tú dijiste en las cámaras que tú querías, que uno de tus sueños era pelear en una misma cartelera y que tú y tu hermano quedaran campeones. En esta situación tú eres el main event y él es el undercard. Sí. Pero el pana con quien va a pelear no quiere pelear por el belt. Sí. ¿Cómo tú te sientes acerca de tu hermano? Ah, pues me siento muy bien, me siento bien agradecido que llegamos a este momento. Pues todo el trabajo que hicimos toda la vida, tenemos 23 años boxeando, so, era mucho trabajo para llegar a este, en este momento, pero seguimos, seguimos trabajando duro. Um, el, trabajo, to, el trabajo todavía no está completo hasta que ganemos la pelea, so, me siento muy bien ahorita, muy orgulloso de todo y... Um, no, pues sí, bien feliz. Duro, duro. Y por último, brother, eh, tu campamento para Plant, te vimos bien rayado, bien cortado, eh, like, en una condición física, pero a otro nivel, like, de lo que eres, un champion. ¿Cómo te sientes hoy día para esta pelea? Hasta en esta pelea me siento hasta mejor. Estoy en otro nivel, nivel que la otra vez. Um, estoy entrenando bien duro ahorita, me estoy bien enfocado. Tengo los mejores entrenadores del mundo. Mi amor Heredia, José Benavides. 
Travis, Poncho. Um, yeah, Poncho, todos mis, mis amigos que, te, que, te, que tengo aquí. It's not just me doing the job, it's todos hacemos el trabajo juntos y gano, ganamos las peleas juntos también. Duro, duro, bro. Gracias, estamos viendo de. Gracias. Hey, a ti, a ti, a ti. A ti, a ti. Gracias, bro. No, papi, gracias a ti. You guys, that's it. We're gonna be later. Okay, are you Marco? We're Marco. You ready? Hey, let's go. Oh, Marcos, you got five minutes. No. No, they're the last one. Yeah, I, I need the gym empty for me. So. Okay. Oh, okay. Here, so um, yeah. I get this. Yeah. You want me to stand up or sit uh, down? No, sit down. I just adjust the tripod right here. Can, can you get through? Yeah, go right here. He came all the way from Mexico. Yeah. From from Guatemala. <laughs> ¿Qué <laughs> Right next to you, dude. Just give me a second. Just give me a second. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I could really go to work and work on combinations and do, you know, at, at the end of the day, just have fun. You know, let my combinations free, uh, go freely and, you know, throw, uh, just be who I am. You know what I mean? Um, I think the last fight, you know, I kind of got caught into that mode where I'm just trying to take his head off the first couple rounds. But then when it got to the sixth round, I'm letting my hands go. It was a completely different fight. So now that I, that I know, you know, how to handle that, you know, and this fight is going, it's completely different. But it's still the same amount of intensity. You know, honestly, I'm pro I'm working extremely hard, you know, because I was really disappointed that I didn't get the knockout or the stoppage my last fight. So we're going to try extremely hard to get it this time. Do you think, given his style, that you will be able to, and I, you kind of alluded to it, I don't know if you feel that, like the moment he feels your combinations or your pressure, that he's, he's going to turn to, you know, what, what he usually was early in his career, use his legs and, and box and move, but do you feel you can? Oh yeah, definitely. That's, it's never been a problem for me. I mean, it's not, I'm not new to this. I've been boxing 23 years. You know, I've sparred the best of the best. I've been fighting, you know, really good fighters lately. Um, obviously, he's another step up in class because he's really good. But this is this is what I want. I don't run from no, um, I don't run from a challenge. You know, I bring it in, and I'm, I'm very excited to accept to to fight uh, and to get this challenge and you know prove everybody wrong. Cause, you know, everybody likes likes to talk shit about me, saying I'm not this, I'm not that. But after I beat the fuck of whoever I have in front of me in the ring, they have nothing else to say to me. So I'm gonna just keep shutting everybody's mouth up. Have you visualized like how the fight's gonna look in, in your mind, and how does it look? Yeah, um, if you're if you're a top-notch fighter, you know, world-class fighter, that's the number one key is visualization. You know, um, especially for me when I go on my long runs, I like to dissect everything in my head and you know really go from round to round what I'm gonna do. I mean, it's it's a that's a good tip for young fighters coming up too. That's a really big part of it, visualization, because if you could get it done in your head. You know, once it gets to the fight, you know, it's just automatic, you know, so you just got to put the pieces in your head, put the game plan in, and then um, when you when you get in the ring, just, you know, follow the game, the game plan. So how does it look? Me beating the fuck out of Bubu Andrade. <laughs> that's, that's exactly how it looks. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel, you know, a late round stoppage? Like, so be honest with you, middle? I don't know. Um, with me, I'm, I'm going to strike the first chance I get. Um, I don't know, we'll see how, how long he lasts, but he's not gonna last the whole fight, I promise you that. Um, I feel great this fight, you know, I feel really motivated, um, really um, conditioned really well. I think this camp, I've, I've thrown more combinations than I've thrown in any other camp. Every sparring session, we've had at least 10 amazing combinations in the whole in, in sparring, every single time. I'm not just talking about one time, I'm talking about, how much times have we sparred? Like, fuck, 30 times? 30 or 40. Every every one of those sparring sessions have had amazing flurries, so I'm just looking I'm looking forward to having fun in this fight. Yeah, you showed me that video of a, like the uh, 60 punch combo. Yeah, yeah, what, 20 <laughs> seconds, yeah 20 that seconds. you unleashed. Now it always surprises me, man. Like your your conditioning uh, and your ability to throw all those punches. Um, but when you look at Boo Boo, is there anything that he brings to the table that you're kind of curious about? You're kind of like thinking like, hmm, I wonder how that is going to play with uh, my style. To be honest with you. Um, I don't think like that. I don't think like, oh, that's gonna be dangerous or not. I just look for his strong suits and his weak suits. If it's, you know, a, a strong right hand, there's a couple ways we can evade with that. If there's a strong left hand, there's a couple ways we could evade and then come back with the counter. So it's just basically you setting the traps in play. He does a lot of stuff good, I'm not gonna lie, but um, we, have a, we have a lot of uh, plans for him. You know, also on the uh, co-main event, it's going to be your brother uh, taking on uh, Jamal Charlo. Given the press conference, man, like people are hyped for, for not only your fight, but I, I feel like because it's so recent, it just happened, people are hyped uh, for your brother's fight as well. Overall, what would you make of the press conference uh, that your brother had uh, a few days ago with him virtually with uh, Jamal Charlo and your thoughts on the fight? To be honest with you, I feel like Charlo's scared. He knows he's going to get knocked out. You know, that's why he's just saying dumbass shit, but... You know, whatever, it's gonna be a good fight. I'm a little, honestly, I'm a little bit jealous and my brother gets to knock him out before me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so we'll get to him soon. But you know, it's gonna be a great night of boxing, man. November 25th, last pay-per-view is definitely gonna be a night to remember. And I'm just looking uh, forward to, um, you know, going out and putting on a great performance for my family, uh, my son, you know, he always watches me. And, um, you know, the crowd, my boxing family, you know, I really do have a lot to show to the boxing world. So I can't wait to show it. Yeah, I had uh, put out uh, fan questions uh, for people to ask you, but one of them was like, do you, do you wish like you and your brother could fight both of the brothers like on, on the same night? Like what yeah. a card that would be. That would be, yeah, that would be amazing. That would be uh, definitely a dream come true. Um, but we're, we're, we're getting there. You know what I mean? The, the thing about this is that I want a, a lot of fighters to understand is if you want to be in a certain place, it's not going to happen overnight. It takes patience. I mean, just look at me. Um, 
I've been, been boxing since I was three years old. You know, it's barely my second pay-per-view fight. I've been professional 10 years. So he's just patient, patient. You got to stay patient. And the big fights will be made eventually. Yeah, you know, the, the big fight that everybody wants for you is obviously Canelo. Uh, You've been the mandatory for years now. What, like two years, two and a half years, something like that. Uh, was there any indication when he signed the deal with, you know, PVC that they went to you and like, hey, David, it doesn't matter if it's the second fight or the third fight, but we plan on having him fight you one of these fights. To be honest with you, they, they, nobody's ever told me that, uh, PVC or anybody, but I just feel like it, it just makes sense in any, every category. If people want to see it, it's a great fucking fight to be made. Um, you know, and, and it makes sense for everybody, you know what I mean? I feel like this brings boxing back. It's not saying that it's been gone, but you know, it's been coming back. Like you see, they're all Spence, Terrence Crawford, Ryan Garcia, Javante Davis. The boxing is growing as a whole because we're putting these great fights on. And we need, this is the fight we need in the super middleweight division. You know, I'm hungry. You know, I'm very uh, motivated. I'm excited for this. And I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm not going. Though. That's what people ask me. Are you frustrated? I mean, I don't, I'm not frustrated because I'm going I'm to stay here. I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to barely turn 27 this year on December. So, I mean, I have at least 15 years left in boxing. Oh, you know, yeah, I, that much? I mean, I have 15 years left in boxing. Yeah. These first 10 years, we just blew by quick. So, we got another 15. Now that I know I'm really what I'm... Uh, a capable of now the stars. I'm gonna reach for the stars. I'll make all my deepest dreams come true. Yeah, that was uh, another one of the fan questions that came to me was if you can't get that fight, what other goals do you have? I know I spoke to you about before Bill about, about maybe going up a weight class, but say the the three fights happen and for some reason or another you can't get them. Like it, I guess is that in your mind? Like you know what? If I can't get this dude, I'm just gonna move up. Fight better be a ball. If those fights don't happen, I think you have to question, you know, the sanctioning bodies. You know what I mean? Um, what else are we going to do? I mean, this is a fight everybody wants to see, and I'm number one contender. It's not like I'm begging for something. I'm, why is there title eliminators and why is there WBC in from belts if you're not going to get the opportunity? If they're not, like, enforced. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah so, I mean, I'll go up to if, – if I can't get those fights, then I'll go up, I'll go up to fight people. Or uh, I'll go try to, you know, I set my conquest on 175. Like I said, I don't want no handouts either. I want to, you know, earn my spots everywhere I go, even at 175. But, you know, I see that, uh, I see that weight class. You know, I could, I want to become champion at 175, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Yeah, you're a big kid, man. Um, even growing up, you were a bigger kid too. Like, do you see yourself going above 175? I, yeah, I think so. I definitely do think so. But we take it one step at a time from 168, then go up to 175, and then we might end up a cruiserweight. But right now, I really got my eyes set on 175. Heavyweight? You think heavyweight's ever possible? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> no, that, that might be a bridge too yeah, far, David. Not, yeah. uh, I got to go through uh, some of these notes uh, that I have in here because there, there's one topic I did want to touch uh, on you with. Um, Crawford throwing his hat in to quantify Canelo at 168. Would imagine, you know, the fans want to see you and Canelo even more, but did that kind of throw you off guard also? I mean, everybody wants to fight Canelo. It's a money, it's a money fight, you know what I mean? Um, I think even Inouye would come up to fight Canelo. <laughs> Canelo wanted to fight him. But is this, is this a lot of money uh, to be made with that fight? Um, I mean, I don't want to see Crawford to fight uh, Canelo, to be honest with you. But um, it would be, I'm not saying it wouldn't be a great fight. It would be a great fight, but I just, I feel like if... I, I deserve my opportunity. And I'm gonna, and after this fight, what else are you gonna say? You know what I mean? This is a tough fight. You know, the, the top, uh, the top WB, the top people ranked as WC are fighting each other. So I mean, it, it shouldn't be, it should be an easy call. So I mean, I don't know. I don't want to keep speaking about that subject. We're ready for our fight, November 25th. I'm gonna go put in work. Since he's asking for the fight at 168, just curious, because he's calling out Canelo at 168. You're you're a 168 fighter. And I know it sounds crazy, but if he were to like turn around and be like, "Hey, yeah, I'll fight David." Oh yeah, I'll be dope. I have a lot of respect for Terence Crawford, yeah. and uh, just because I want to fight, if we would fight, doesn't mean we have hard feelings for each other. He's definitely a great fighter. I'd love to fight him. Yeah, that'd be crazy, man. Just the good. size difference yeah. wise, and, and just like seeing how like him being at 147 wanting to go up and fight at, at 168. That, yeah, that's kind of nuts. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I would love to see him fight Charlo, yeah. Terence Crawford, uh, the one at 154. That would be a great fight, and hopefully get it made. Because at the end of the day, I, I'm a fan of boxing and love to fight the homies. Yeah, well, speaking of, of just overall, you know, th this camp, David, and, and your growth a, as a fighter as well, like, how have you improved in, in your opinion in the last six months uh, coming into this uh, camp, both, you know, mentally and physically? I've improved a lot. I feel like um, my state of, um, I don't know, like your, your spiritual, uh, your spiritual yeah. side, you know, it's, it's, it's making me more stronger. More disciplined, more dedicated. I think it's just uh, me, just having my family now, and just um, just looking at life in a different way. Um, 
really it just made me um not think about the now but think about the future and you know to me to be where i want to be i have to be a disciplined and dedicated man and uh you know at the end of the day i also want to be you know a, a, um you know a, a leader to these uh, to my teammates too you know if, if they need anything i can teach them um and that's that's just really what i want to be i want to be positive and be the best version of myself i could be good 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 I, i'm gonna go ahead and, and just do a, a quick thing with you um I put out fan questions for you, so I, I want to get some of the uh, questions in. And it's not going to be a lot. It's going to be like two or three for you, David. But, uh, you know, I just want to go ahead and interact with our, our community here and uh, ask you some of the questions that they had for you. Um, one of which is, let's see here. <coughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't die on us. Yeah, David. Okay. For, uh, for you, David, uh, you get to steal one aspect of another fighter's game, past or present, and, and hand it to yourself. What fighter would it be, and what part of their game would it be? It would be James Tony with the shoulder roll defense, and um, <laughs> five, I, mean, I, I, could, I could do a lot of these. I could, I'll do the pullback right hand, Mayweather's pullback right hand, Golovkin's jab, Julio Cesar Chavez's left hook to the body. You know, this is this is regular stuff for for a lot of fighters too that they got another history. That you know, that's if you really look at it, you look at every single fighter. Every single fighter does something good. So if you're a smart fighter, you study everything that that these fighters do and apply it to your own game. You know, that's how you learn, but those are definitely the top four that I would pick. <laughs> nice, man, nice. Uh, this is from uh, Duck Duck. Uh, it's a weird name that some of these guys have, but uh, which fighters, if any, do you draw the most inspiration from? Are there, and I think you just kind of mentioned it about like uh, specific fighters and what styles you've uh, borrowed from, but I guess you as a, a fighter, who have you drawn the most inspiration from? As a fighter, you know, I've drawn, um, obviously, I love a lot of boxers. I love Oscar De La Hoya, Roy Jones Jr., James Tony, Marco Antonio Barrera, Julio Cesar Chavez, Morales, um, Aaron Pryor, Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler. This is all the greats, bro. Like I, I really am a, a boxing enthusiast. And I love boxing. So all the, all the boxers, all the legendary boxers I've gone and I've watched every single one of them my whole life. I still do now. You know, I still do now. So I, I find a lot of inspiration from those fighters. Okay, this one is, I'll ask Jose this question too, but um, this question was, as you get older and your body matures, is it still easy for you to make 168? Uh, and you kind of alluded to this too, that you are open to moving up, but yeah, how hard is it to make 168? It's not hard at all. You guys keep asking me the same shit. I've been yeah. making this weight for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're growing, right? It's, it's, uh, to be honest with you, bro, the only reason dieting is, I mean, the only reason making weight gets hard if you, if you don't follow a diet recipe. Because it really is. Also, a thing is that you gotta. A lot of people don't lose weight. Uh, don't know how to cut weight. You gotta fill yourself up with water every day. I've been drinking two gallons of water for the past three months. Oh jeez. So when it's time to lose weight and get all that water weight out, you do in the last week. You cut all the water out, and then you lose fifteen to twenty pounds of water. You know, it's like a mean? flush. It's a flush. Yeah. yeah, it's a flush. People don't know how to lose weight, and you know, sometimes a lot of people they get injured or they go to the fucking hospital because they don't know how to lose weight. I mean, this it really is a science to lose weight, but if, you know, I've been on my diet for the past two months and a half. My last fight, I made weight comfortably. I think I was on weight two days before. I've been doing that, you know, since obviously since I had that, um, I missed weight that one time, you know, I learned the recipe and I got it, you know, good. And now we don't have no problem losing weight. Obviously it's, it's, it's not hard. It's just that you got to do all the work. You know what I mean? But it's, it shouldn't be hard. I mean, it's what we do with professional boxers. We work out and we're you know we work hard ex uh, every single day. So it's it's not hard. You just got to do the work. Uh, another one for you, uh, David. Just uh, because of the the combinations that you throw. You know, do, does your above average output rate come from conditioning, training, or natural ability, physical attributes that allow you to have a high work rate? So also, too, one of the guys that um, I didn't put in that list that you told me for the people I gained inspiration from is Manny Pacquiao, too. I wouldn't say it's it's not natural ability. It's not con what well, is conditioning, too, but it's also the subconscious mind. When Me, I watch Pacquiao all day. So, like, what happens when you look at something all day, like, I want to be like him. So you watch it so much until it gets in the subconscious mind, and when you get in there, it, you let go. You know what I mean? And I've never let my size... Um, uh, discourage me from throwing a lot of punches. You know, I've always, I've always, that's the type of style I've always liked, throwing punches and bunches. And you've seen it through my, my whole career. So, as you get older, you need to learn, uh, you need to learn yourself and what makes you tick and what you like to do and what type of fighter you are. And uh, me, I love throwing combinations. So I, I always throw combinations. You know, you always see me do my, my yes. flurries. And I, that's something I love to do. So 
now it's it, it's just in my subconscious. I just it's something I love to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, now that I think about it, you when you were a kid, you were watching Manny training at yeah, Wild Card, yeah. so I would imagine that made like a big impression on yeah, you. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I love Manny Pacquiao. I think Manny Pacquiao is just it's ferocious. The way he throws his combinations is unlike anything else. But it's it's not impossible to do if you try to do it yourself. The only thing is that when you throw a lot of punches like that. The thing is not throwing the punches, it's getting back in position and putting your hands back up. That's what people don't understand. Mm -hmm. So um, if you get that down, then you can do whatever you want. You know, you know what I mean? Um, just have fun with it. But yeah, that's, uh, that's just the way I like, how to, I like how to fight. I feel like I get a lot of, uh, what's the word? I get a lot of satisfaction out of hitting like six, seven punch combinations. And that's what I like to do. I tell you, it's like a video game. Yeah. yeah <laughs> no, it really is. Uh, you know, last one uh, for me, um, David. I mentioned Showtime's going away. Um, HBO is gone now. It's kind of like a weird position that the sports and even for like fans are kind of like wondering like, hey, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Like, you as a fighter, like, do you get that same like wonder like, yo, what's what's going on with everything? Like, I just, I, to be honest with you, I was, I was talking to a sports illustrator about that yesterday and I, just the way seeing how everything is going, I think boxing is evolving into something different. You know, you see the, the YouTubers fight, the celebrities boxing fight, and those guys are pointing big numbers. Plus you already got, you know, the traditional boxing great fighters. So. I feel like what's gonna happen is that maybe everything's gonna merge into one. You know, you hear that, uh, I probably shouldn't say that, you you know that obviously some boxing companies are losing money, so yeah. maybe everybody gets together and it makes boxing a bigger entity and stronger as a whole. So, I mean, hopefully that's what happens so we can get all these fights happening and there's no more, you know, promoter this, promoter that, so. Um, and we might get some YouTuber fights on some on a card, or some great, uh, you know, some really great fights. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, that just brings more fans and more eyeballs to the sport, and that's at the end of the day what we really want. So uh, I don't know, I don't know where it's gonna go. Um, I don't know where we're gonna end up at, but we're gonna keep working hard, and we're gonna make sure we still uh, continue being the sport. All right, good stuff, David. Yeah, good uh, checking in with you. I appreciate the time, man. Thank this you. man right here, pay per view for the second time, going against Demetrius Andrade in Las Vegas. Good stuff. Thank cool. you. Thank you.